And welcome to another super cool radio interview. I'm your host, Matthew Thomas. Thank you so much for tuning in. I have a great guest joining me at this time who I'm super excited to chat with in September. Violet Breed, a collaboration of Brian Wheat and Alex, released their debut single entitled Awake. Please welcome the lead vocalist for Violet Breed, Alex. Hey, everybody. Thanks for having me on the show. It's good to be here. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing fantastic. How are you? I'm very well. It's a um, cold evening in England. It's raining outside, as it always does. But um, I'm good to be chatting about Violet Breed and good to be meeting everybody on the show. So thanks for having me. Of course, of course. It's funny. Uh, last last night, it was cold and rainy where I'm at. So it's kind of funny. You know, same yeah, same yeah. weather for you. <laughs> All right. I know we got... Quite a bit to discuss with Violet Breed, as I said, but I kind of want to start at the beginning. So how'd you meet Brian Wheat? Um, so I met Brian. Uh, he was working with another group at the time and a mutual friend introduced us. And our friendship kind of sparked because we were big Beatles fans. So I think I had like a Sergeant Pepper's t-shirt on at the time. And then just since then, like he's been a big mentor and uh, influence in sort of like my music story, I guess, so far. Like and everything kind of like before when I met him was kind of just like college and high school and just going around playing local bars and that sort of thing. But um, we had the same interest in music and he's helped me on other projects in the past that have been amazing, but I've kind of always hit a glass ceiling. And then during COVID when the whole world shut down through technology, like how me and you are communicating now, it's quite easy to, to do stuff and to record and to, you know, formulate ideas and songs so i started writing these songs during lockdown and showing them to him he was like these are amazing like we ever thought about doing something together it could be a great platform for you and i was like hell like this would be an incredible opportunity for me and he's such a, a talented musician himself and a songwriter and producer so it kind of ticked all the boxes and it seems like an odd thing to be working you know across the pond but actually we make it work we were just literally just doing something before this zoom call on facetime and we're you know doing back and forth with song ideas and stuff so we just kept a really good friendship and he's been like, like a father figure to me i guess as well in a lot of ways especially with his experience in the music industry so i'm still learning a lot but i'm learning with someone who's a pro at doing it so it's a, it's, it's a cool thing it's a great um collaboration to be to have with him Oh, definitely, for sure, and it shows like in the music as well. So I'm curious, like I know uh, you, you said he's been, um, you know, close friend and mentor. Like, like mm -hmm. how long um, have you guys been kind of just like you know friendship, and like how long have you guys been working together? I mean, on the Violet Breed project, even though it's come out now, we've been probably like sitting on it maybe for about I'd say two years, maybe. But um, I, I guess I've known Brian now for about eight or nine years and not during that time like he was helping me with another project with like producing and and songwriting and kind of like being a mentor but um when COVID happened that's that project kind of reached an end and to start this new one with him it was like like I said to you it's like wow like this will be a really cool thing to to kind of take on board and what's great is is our influences even though there's like an age gap between us which i don't really like notice anyway because he's he looks so cool and he's a rock star anyway but it's um it's so easy because we like the same band so like we love queen we love beatles zeppelin my chemical romance i think we just wanted to take a piece of everything and kind of make our own sound because i think through doing a lot of interviews no one can really like point or like put a put the song or the genre on like a shelf at the minute which i think is quite cool because it's quite unique so yeah it's great i'm definitely gonna join that list of not being able to put uh you know the song yeah. in the genre but i think that's 
to the benefit of you guys though because you have that unique sound to it like it's not, definitely i would say it's like in the alternative like rock category to some degree yeah but to speak broadly i should say but yeah. like but you have a lot of different just like those styles and influences definitely come through in the music that's really cool i'm really it's it's like refreshing to hear like someone say that to you because like it, this sounds really silly but when you're doing like your social media posts and like you do like uh how you promote like your hashtags I, i'm always doing like alternative rock and people said it's got that 90s sort of nostalgia and like oh that's really cool because i was only a baby in, in the 90s but like it's cool that that's kind of like coming across weirdly somehow because i think from a songwriting perspective like i love like kurt cobain and that sort of like simplicity but the melodies are so strong so if that's kind of coming across and how that that's a cool thing i think Oh, definitely. For sure. Again, you know, it, it's music. There, there's really no rules for it. So, like, whatever people, like, you know, pick up through it, uh, you know, I think it's cool to see, especially kind of that, as I've heard other people, it's it's got, you know, people could say it's one thing, people could say it's another thing. Yeah. And again, I think that goes to the, the benefit of you guys. That's cool. So, but I, I'm kind of curious. So, like, um, for you, I, I will be getting to Awake here just uh, momentarily, but I'm curious for you, like, did you ever think, like, you know, either, like, growing up through teenage years adult years like that you'd be working with you know a legend such as brian wheat um it's one of those things where the idea of it's quite daunting like um because of the responsibility at hand like he's in tesla tesla this like massive influential rock band who have a wonderful fan base that i'm starting to kind of meet and and uh, hopefully be accepted along the way but I think because it feels so natural to to be in the partnership with him, I, I haven't really got like much fear or anxiety. It just feels quite natural and good because from early signs of how we're working and how the first songs come out, there's nothing to be afraid of, I don't think. So yeah, it, it's all it's it's like a nice positive energy and like he brings so much to the table with the experience and and the knowledge and the production side of things. So yeah, it, it's a funny one, but I try not to worry. There's no need for me to worry about it just yet. So I'm just kind of, I'm just enjoying the process of actually putting music out, meeting people like yourself and talking to music fans. So that's what I love. I like like meeting and connecting with people. And it's kind of new for me because it's like a song comes out and boom, I'm on Zoom calls left, right and center. But it, it's, it's, it's really good. I'm, en I'm enjoying it, which is the most important thing. Well, I'm glad you're having a uh, you know, great time with it. I've, I've seen, you know, you're doing a lot, uh, you know, a lot of press lately, which is yeah. which is awesome to see that, you know, people are starting to gravitate towards it, which is it's just cool to see. And it shows just, uh, you know, where you guys are starting. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how you guys progress. Yeah. I mean, it's one of the things where I can't predict it. I can't tell anyone like where it's going to go. But I know we're just focusing on just putting out singles kind of every like, two month on a rotation and just and just watching it kind of grow organically i guess because it's a weird way of doing things but you can do so much online now like you can record a video post it and it's kind of like playing a gig these days whereas like 10 years ago or 15 years ago it was all about playing live and and you know circulating and i still believe in those things because I, I do that quite heavily on my own over here with like a little with my acoustic guitar and my little solo stuff but yeah, it's it's a different perspective of looking at things, but it's it's a it's interesting. Oh, definitely for sure. But I'm kind of curious, and I'm not sure if you if you know just yet. But like, is Bio Breed going to be like a like studio project? Do you guys eventually plan on touring at some point? I think if there's a demand for it and things can go smoothly, then absolutely, yeah. I mean, it's early days just from the first song, but um, I think from the reception of people, I mean it would be amazing to get it on the road for sure. But um, at the minute I have, there's no like plans or no bookings or schedules. I think it's just all kind of studio based at the minute, but you never know. I mean, if it comes down to, if I, I mean, if, I think it could do, and if it does, it'd be amazing, but we'll just have to wait and see. Oh, for sure. For sure. Well, I think it'd be definitely cool for you guys, uh, you know, to happen, but of course, obviously with the, the man has to be there and everything mm -hmm. like that, but I think at least be cool or maybe play some one offs at, at some point. Yeah. As yeah. Well. But I, obviously a big reason I'm chatting with you right now. So the new debut single, Awake, it's out right now. So like, if anyone hasn't checked it out, not familiar with Violet Breed, how would you describe Awake? I would describe Awake as an immediate impact. It's quite, um, 
it's very honest it's upfront and it's hard hitting and i think that's kind of the 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 structure and the kind of strategies that me and brian i think wanted to do with with the song so i think it's got a good catchy chorus it's heavy but in the same way it's heavy but it's melodic so it's really hard to describe your own song but in terms of like the themes of it like i guess it's about being awake to the world and what's going on around you and the most important thing is i think we wanted to write a song that everybody could kind of relate to you know that sort of lockdown not really sure where you're going maybe understanding things and seeing things in a different perspective that's kind of like the main themes but then people can interpret it how they want to which is also another amazing thing as well so but i think yeah it's hard hitting it's honest and it's catchy that they're, they're, that's how i would describe it i think i, I like that because i i also agree with, i like the catchiness of the song mm. Uh, I, it really it, it really grabs you like when you first start hearing it like I, I had to listen to it like four or five times just to you know kind of because you then you pick up things that you may have yeah, missed in the first one yeah exactly so uh yeah i i really like that that again as you said it makes an impact right away i think this is a great yeah. song for your debut single because like you guys just come out the gate and you make an impact yeah that like when it came to choosing a single like i didn't really get involved too much because i'm trusting you know the experience of brian's ears and people who he knows and stuff so i'm quite relaxed when it comes to stuff like that but at the same time i was really pleased it was like the first choice because when i listen to what we've got kind of um in the vaults it's like this is a the perfect introduction to what we are and it's only going to expand into sort of other territories as well so I, I was really pleased and the title just works well as well like awake it's like a beginning and I, you know, the start of something and an opening. So yeah, I, I really appreciate that. It's really cool. Oh, yeah, of course. And yeah, definitely. It's a great first pick. You know, I'm very excited to hear some more new music from you guys. And I know you mentioned you guys have some other songs in the work. So like, can you give me hints, like what people can expect, like, you know, the direction, the themes, anything yeah. like that? I think in terms of themes, I think we're just writing from an honest perspective of what um, each other have, have both experienced over their life. And it's and we want to write something again, like I said, that people can relate to because there's so many songs sometimes where you listen to them and, and it could be a, a, so catchy and an amazing song. But I think, what was that even about? So I think we're trying to be quite direct in what our song's about, just maybe relate to people a bit more. But in terms of sonically, naturally there's that rock sound and that anth we're kind of going for the anthemic sound because i have no shame in that like i want if things go well i want our songs to kind of fill arenas and fill stadiums if it ever could be that but at the same time i think we've displayed that we're not a one-trick pony so it'd be interesting to see like when sort of like the ballads come out there's a couple of just acoustic tracks and with piano and strings so there is a bit of everything kind of like what most bands do but it's nice that we've explored those textures quite early on so and that with our inspirations of like queen and the beatles especially you know those guys are the pros that they were a rock pop band but they had all these amazing qualities to them like funk and gospel and you know string quartets so yeah i think we're gonna opt there's like a core sound but we're exploring a sound as other sounds as well Oh, yeah, I really like that, and, you know, just what you said with, you know, Queen and the Beatles of, like, how diverse their music was. Like, mm. me, as, as a listener of music, I appreciate that. I know some people like to stick to certain genres, which is fine, but I always, I always kind of like when, you know, bands branch out a little bit because it gives you something different from their perspective. Yeah, that that's, like, I'm kind of the same as you. Like, when I listen to, like, an album, I, it's so cool to see how a band's exploring through different styles and, and textures and stuff like that. And there are, like I said, there are, there are people who are very strict, like it's got to be rock, it's got to be this. And that's great because I, I, I'm like that too with things, but at the same time, it is cool to have a bit of diversity for sure. Oh yeah, for sure. No, like, I'm, I definitely like, if I'm like working out, like I'm listening to metal music, like, you know, like yeah, that's, yeah. you know, it just, there, there's a time and place for, for all of that. But just like, as you see, like the discography of a band, um, it's, it's always cool when you're like, oh, hey, this album, they tried some a little bit different and maybe, you know, sometimes it doesn't work, but sometimes it turns out to be like some of the best songs they've written. That's like me, like when I'm at the gym, it's not very, it's not, I don't listen to metal, but I'm like, I'm in this like Imagine Dragons thing where like, it's so like big, if I'm on the treadmill pumping, like it kind of like gets me going. So 
I mean, I would like to think we might have a couple of tracks like that, like gym music, because that'd be really cool to say that you, people listen to you at the gym. So that's cool. Oh, for sure. For sure. It was funny. The gym I work out there, there's been a uh, one, I think maybe two bands that they've played, like they have like their own rotation, you know, whatever. Oh, really? whatever. Like, yeah, there's been a, at least for sure that I saw one band that I interviewed that they played. So that was like really cool. I was like, man, that's cool. Like, so that yeah. Cool. Oh yeah, but um, but it was it was a metal song, ironically, and I was like, oh, this is an interesting pick for a for a gym. But I was like, hey, I'm I'm in for it. Yeah, here <laughs> over here, it's very much like pop and like sort of like chart chart music. But that I it's just my personal taste, like that that doesn't get me like inspired or like pumped up. I'm just like, oh, it actually gives me a headache in the gym. You know, like all the air condition, all the all the lighting and stuff. So I just whack my headphones on. Like I said, anything kind of rocky that's got like a good thing to it and the randomly it sounds corny the rocky balboa soundtrack like i love i love running to that as well that's quite cool <laughs> hey that is probably one of the best like picks for a gym playlist i know, I know. It, it's it's so cliche but i'm there just like you know with this sort of rocky theme tune music and it yeah, just gets me really focused in the zone so it's funny Oh yeah, well it's funny. I I work for that gym now, and um, like now since I've started working there, it's mostly like it's mostly just like pop music, and I'm like, guys, yeah, like yeah. let me let me let, I'll, I'll take care of it. Don't worry. That's good for your playlist, Dom. <laughs> exactly, exactly. They did play the hives though, and I thought that was cool because I I really yeah. like the hives. So yeah. yeah, the hives are amazing. That they, they um I didn't get to go, but the, I think last year they were main support for Arctic Monkeys. And um, my friends, they're like, yeah, the highs were, they were all, this, it's all the suits when they did this, like, tour of them. They just said, yeah, the highs blew the Arctic Monkeys off the stage. I was like, wow. So I was gutted I didn't get to see that. Yeah, I, um, I haven't seen them live yet because um, they, they're touring the U.S., I think, right now. And, oh, really? um, yeah, but uh, fortunately, it wasn't really coming, like, close to my area, unfortunately. Oh. So. Yeah, so I, but I I want to see them at like some point. I I, I went to a a record show last night. I picked up uh, their best of CD. So like that's I been in my car like you know yeah. since then. Well, like strong recommend from like my, my friends who went. And they said they were insane. It's it's a very high energy, hard hitting show. And I've seen clips on like social media and YouTube and that. Like wow, yeah. Because Arctic Monkeys when they started out, they were very like ferocious indie sort of rock, and then they've kind of gone into this really weird like psychedelic funk i don't know really know what it is but like it was a when when they set for the highs are open i was like oh wow yeah people are in for a massive treat when they see them playing oh for sure for sure now hopefully hopefully we both get to see them live because i know it'd be yeah. fantastic but now i i did want to you know bring it back to vile breed here because i also wanted to discuss the uh, the music video for a week mm -hmm. so like how was the filming how was that experience it looked like a blast yeah the so i filmed all my stuff over here so about 10 minutes from my house one of my best friends um he has like a studio at rehearsal rooms and like a warehouse for equipment so i was like oh can what can i bring like brian and some guys in to film a video and he was like yeah like i'll help you do it and stuff like that and brian was over here on vacation and he was really jet lagged and i was like look i've got the room he told me kind of like what aesthetic he wanted. So like kind of like a typical live thing where people can actually see us in that sort of um, performance rather than like doing a whole concept video. I, I, I like doing those sort of videos are really confusing, especially for me because like you got to act it. And I think, Oh God, how are we going to act like this whole song out? So we just want to go for something that's just again, straight up honest and quite immediate. But we, I think we were shooting from like 6 PM, I think to around midnight, 1 p uh, 1 AM. And we did about four videos in one setting, but like changing clothes, changing lighting, and then did outtakes around London and then some filming in Italy. So like it's it's really random, but when all the stuff kind of comes out, you've got all this footage kind of meshed up. But with the awake one, it's predominantly in that warehouse environment. But it was great fun. We were just surviving off coffee, energy drinks. And uh, I think well, at the end of it, I ordered like a huge pizza order so we could all just kind of just chill out and and rest. But, it, you know, it went quickly. But um, doing take after take, you know, it's so obvious to say, but it's like, oh, it, it can be knackering. But we, I think we we nailed it quite um, well. We, I think we captured a really good video. And what's also cool is Brian filmed Dave on the Tesla 
um, House of Blues residency they did, I think, last year. That's, and um, so he filmed Dave because obviously Dave features on the guitar doing the solos and most of the guitars on the album. He's a phenomenal musician. So having him in the video as well, it's just like another cool impact of his flying V. It's very signature. And it, yeah, it's what a privilege to have him involved as well. So kind of different places, but just all chopped up together. And it's like, oh, wow, this video actually kind of works in a strange way. Oh, I really like it because it matches like, you know, the song as well as, as we were talking about earlier. You know, it, it makes an impact. I think the video captures that very yeah. well with you know, the, the footage you guys have filmed. Plus, you know, with... Uh, you know, with everybody involved in it as well, and the scenery as well. I think it all turned out very good. Yeah, that was all my my friend. He's a wizard with stuff like that because where they've got so much equipment, it was like lighting rig tick. Was, and not only was it just like a simple static lighting rig, we've got like moving heads, we had smoke machines. It's like, oh my god, like we've got this full budget, and it is really fun to be involved in that. So I'm glad it's come across on camera. Like this is like you know, if we ever play live, this is kind of like what to expect, you know. Oh yeah, I think it definitely you got the uh, you captured the like the the arena rock sound like yeah, as you said yeah. with, the, with the lights and, and the and the smoke and everything like it turned out amazing. Oh, thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you. I'm curious because I I also heard in a previous interview. So you collect uh, vinyl and LPs. I do. So I think I was kind of late to the party, but um, I think I've been doing it now maybe four or five years but like i've kind of been very selective in what i'm collecting now so man, that's like a hobby that me and brian love to do together we kind of go to like these record stores of our like little record bags and he just goes here buy this one buy this one and, and through that i've like accumulated these amazing bands that i would never have discovered before and it's been really cool like in terms of inspiration for the different sounds but um i love collecting queen vinyls and stuff like that so i've got like five different copies of one album because like one's pr first pressing one's a color pressing one was pressed in mexico one was like not pressed but it is pressed it, it, like all the test pressings and stuff like that so it's literally just sat right next to me i could twiddle the camera to you but this this whole bulk is just queen so hang on you can just see nice yeah so it's like it's a, i've got a night i'm in i live in a bungalow so it's like an apartment sort of thing on the floor but um I, I'll have a cool little like setup. So like I've got my little player there and I just, yeah, I just like zoning out of a cup of coffee and just my perfect day is waking up coffee, go to a record store near me because now around my town, I can get to a local record store, like independent, like half an hour in every direction. And I'm straight in that queue section, looking at all the queen stuff, like I'm making sure I haven't got anything but i love it it's it's an addiction but it's i love it so much and then on top of that i buy just you know anything i like getting original stuff mainly but everybody's doing all these awesome re-releases now and you're like oh you've got to crack the bank account and and get like the same thing again but it's it's just like a curse but i know yeah, it's one of my favorite things to do like it, it keeps me grounded and keeps me like really chilled out oh for sure for sure so i'm Curious, so like, what has been like the the best like uh, you know LP recommendation Brian has given you? Uh, apart from Tesla, if it's gonna be a recommendation, um, I like there's this time. I think there'd be two. There's one time when we were in Italy and I saw this. Uh, they had they were in this small bar and him and his uh, Brian and his wife we were watching like MTV on on this screen, and this front man come on. I was like, whoa, that guy looks so cool, and it was uh, in excess, um, Michael Hutchins. And then he was like, oh yeah, they have a great album kit. You should uh, you should listen to it. And then I was like, oh my god, like this night nineteen eighty six album. I think it is anyway. That like, with uh, kicking in excess, like just hit after hit after hit. So that's probably one. And then two, I was with him when I first saw it, and he he didn't he kind of introduced it to me, but he was just like, oh yeah, that's that. Again in Italy, just walking past this record stop. It's right behind me actually, Jeff Buckley's Grace. And um, I remember just seeing the cover, which is that picture behind me going, God, like that's so striking. Like the actual cover is even more striking. And he was like, yeah, that's Jeff Buckley Grace. Like he did a cover of Hallelujah. And like, yeah, you should check it out. And I was like, okay. So I bought it and that completely changed everything about how I see and, and kind of like create music and stuff like songwriting and 
the singing style and just yeah it, it, that i think it's his only record which is such a shame because he passed away but it's just phenomenal so i'd say probably those two kick and and jeff buckley's grace those are two fantastic albums and definitely um you know obviously with some of them uh, you know it had impact on you as a musician as well yeah it's just it's just like for what i do over here when i play like because i'm like you i have a job as well and doing music started off as a hobby and now it's turning into a passion and now it's going somewhere else where i don't know where it's going to go but i'm you, you never know but like i go out and play like twice or even three times a week with my acoustic guitar in like pubs clubs and you know whatever do you know what I mean like busking sometimes and in an old school way i have my speakers and my guitar in the back seat of my car and i just drive around and, and play but during lockdown i was watching these early jeff buckley videos of him just with a, a, a an electric in like cafes and i was like wow my god like you can go out and do like so i kind of learned a lot from him in terms of how to like perform and how to there's a lot of power just with an acoustic guitar and a voice you know and it, it teaches you a lot about singing and how to control and being in different environments and yeah, so I, I owe a lot to that sort of period, and especially that record in itself for where I am today as an artist. Well, that is really cool. I appreciate you sharing that. That's awesome to hear, mm. uh, you know, kind of how it's, uh, you know, um, uh, impacted you as a musician. I think that is very cool. Thank you. It's a, a, like a, loads of people know like who he is and what it is, but like behind like that one album, if you kind of, if anybody's interested, they want to like dive back. There's like a thing called Live at Shanae where he plays like 40 songs just in one go live and and it's just like i was like my god like you know having the capacity to so i've kind of like taken that and and kind of like try and do the same you know scratching the surface of what he could do but yeah i feel like there's so much to explore so if anybody's interested when they hear the show i definitely recommend that that era in terms of like songwriting how to perform 100 percent. oh for sure for sure but now uh as we close this out, uh, uh, Alex, I had a great time uh, chatting with you. Thank you so much for stopping by. No, thank you for having me. Like, I, I hopefully when um, other releases come out and things kind of go, you know, upwards and onwards in the future, it'd be cool to come back on the show and just keep talking about our progression and what you know what's inspiring me next and what's kind of going on. I really appreciate you having the time to speak to me. It's been great. Oh, of course, you're welcome on the show anytime. Uh, you know, definitely, I, I look forward to uh, our you know return interview uh, at some point down in the future. Amazing. Uh, but uh, before we close it out, though, so uh, what are the plans for Violet Brie? I know we're you know closing out 2024 in a few months. So, like, what is like early 2025 looking like for you guys? Um, I think it's definitely going to entail a new single for sure, and a video, and another swing at the bat at campaigning and you know interviews and getting the song out on the radio and kind of like the same sort of structure what we're doing now but maybe even elevate it a bit further i'm really excited i can't say what it is because obviously no one knows what it is anyway but i'm really excited for the second single especially when we were debating which one it was going to be either awake or this one and awake was first so i was really happy with that but now this one's coming it's like okay but i i think we're going to take it up a gear which is really exciting I'm excited. I'm excited to see that because again, I really enjoyed Awake, so I want to see like what's the yeah. next year after that. It because yeah, I'm I'm like a bit of a music fan. Like when new bands come out and they just have that one song, it's nice to listen to one, and then when they would drop another song, you can kind of like it's nice to listen to one song after the other. I like I do that all the time. I'm like oh like I like to listen to bands. I don't I don't really enjoy listening to one song at a time. So I'm excited for myself to go. This is the start this is the next piece of the puzzle now. So I'll be interested to see what people think when that comes. Oh yeah, for sure. I, I'm, I'm very curious as well uh, for that. But now uh, closing this out, like for everyone watching and listening, where are the be best places to find a Violet Breed online? So the most obvious, I just tell people if they just go to violetbreed.com because on there, there's like all the link and link tree things to Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, everybody's on that. A anything that is a social media platform, we've got it. If not, um, Violet Breed Music at Instagram and Violet Breed Music at Facebook as well. And then you can find everything on their Violet Breed. Well, very good. I will leave some links for Violet Breed in the description of this podcast as well, along with the music video for Wig. But Alex, as I said, thank you so much for chatting with me. Hey, thank you so much. I hope you have. What time is it over there for you? Uh, it's about one thirty right now. Oh, okay, one thirty. Yeah, so it's, I'm going to go 
cook dinner now and just enjoy a movie and chill out. So I really appreciate it. And it's been a pleasure to chat to you today. Thank you. Uh, likewise as well. For Alex of Violet Breed, I'm your host always, Matthew Thomas. Thank you so much for watching and listening to Super Cool Radio. And remember, stay frosty.